So this is going to be a video where I'm going to share my experience of using DaVinci Resolve for the past one year. Now I started learning DaVinci Resolve back in March or April of 2023. And now we are in May 2024. And I'm just going to share my experience. So the first thing is I started learning the main timeline. And the main timeline was basically editing simple footages, cutting, pasting, all that, all those keyboard shortcuts, all of that. And I gradually shifted towards the Fusion tab, which I found quite interesting. Because in the Fusion tab, it allows you to do a lot of motion graphics stuff and even VFX. And that was something that I wanted to really learn. And therefore, you will see a lot of videos on my channel are based on that, around creating motion graphics in Fusion of the Vigi Resolve. And I did not focus a lot on the color grading or the audio section of DaVinci Resolve because all these different sections of DaVinci Resolve are like different worlds. They are like in their own worlds. So therefore, it requires a lot of time and dedication to learn each of them. And you can master all of them. But for me, I know a little bit about the color grading or, and the audio tab, but mostly what I really mastered in this past year was the Fusion tab. Now, compared to Adobe applications, which I had been using before DaVinci Resolve, I found DaVinci Resolve to be very amazing in that sense that it allows you to do a lot of things that you can do in Mirror Pro and even After Effects. And the best thing about DaVinci is that you get both of these things combined in the same software. So you get motion graphics and like basic timeline editing in the same software that is DaVinci. You don't need to switch between, let's say, Premiere Pro and After Effects if you are using the Adobe applications. Now, there are some drawbacks. Of course, you cannot do a lot of things that you can do in After Effects. And even if you can, I don't know about them as of yet. And the second thing is that you can move different elements between the Adobe applications very easily. For example, you can bring in Adobe Illustrator files from Adobe Illustrator into After Effects quite easily. But if you are just using Premiere Pro, I would say definitely ship towards DaVinci because this is like a free software. You don't have to pay for it. And you can do a lot of things that you can do in Premiere Pro. So this was just my experience of using DaVinci Resolve for the past one year. And of course, right now, I will continue using DaVinci Resolve for all those people who are looking to learn DaVinci Resolve, want to get into learning the software. I hope this video will be helpful for you to start learning DaVinci Resolve. So this was it for this video. I hope that you will find this useful and I'll see you in the next one.